Right, welcome back. Uh, moving swiftly on after the uh, mini project of the Frostmourne Sword, it's time for the next project. Now, when Revel finally announced last year that they were releasing the series of these kits, I couldn't wait to get my hands on one. I literally saw myself with excitement because I've always wanted to build one of these kits. Um, I had some money for my birthday and um, the company I worked for gave me some money in a car for my birthday. And I'm, you know, chuffed with their generosity. So thanks to them for helping me pay for this kit. So here's the next project. Right, moving on to my chest freezer. As you can see, it is the Halo um, series of kits from Revel. Build and play snap tight. I absolutely love the Warthogs. But driving it in the game, 1 through 4, I wasn't really a fan of the RTSs or Halo 5. But I've always loved driving these with a four-wheel drive. In Forza 3, Forza Horizon 3, they didn't replicate the actual driving, it was just static wheels unfortunately, which is a shame. Anyway, uh, moving to the back, you can see how it looks. You get the three figures, uh, Master Chief, Kelly and Frederick. Uh, the tyres are black, I'll explain that in a minute. Unfortunately, the turret doesn't come with a feeder belt, as it says on the picture, so I'm going to be adding my own like I did for the Batwing. Moving the uh, box aside, as you can see, I've laid everything out on my uh, table. There's no sprues, um, it's all snap tight, bagged and loose parts. Now, the tyres, again, like, unlike the picture, these are brown. Um, there was this one guy from America who built one of these, and I, he'd done an absolute wonderful job. He didn't spray paint, he just added to it with weathering. And I asked him, will the tyres stand up to acrylic spray paint and black? And he says, yeah, not a problem, so I'm going to be spraying these back and adding my own weathering. Not to that extent now. You can see you get the uh, wim, rims, so you got a rims and tyres bag. You get um, rails for the outside of the body, even though this body scratched to hell anyway. You get various fixing there, could be an engine block, um, some suspension arms. You get your roll cage fixings for on top of the cockpit. And you get your turret fixings for the actual turret, for the mounted turret. You got like a sound thing there, you pull that tape out and the sounds come on. You get your three figures, you get the uh, Chief, you get Kelly and Fredericks. So I'll be weathering those, I don't know whether there's any decals for those. You get the main chassis and underneath, you can see it's very well detailed. You get the main body as well as you can see, really well detailed. There's no need to spray paint this at all. You get your cockpit tub in your mounted turret area. You can see all the uh, detailing on the floor of the turret. You get your main console. And the main console fixings and some seats. And last but not least, a decal sheet. It's actually not decals and stickers. But I'm going to try and weather these, wear these down as well like the guy did in the video. He did a really good job of these. So you can see they're not too bad. Instructions. You've got like a contents guide to make sure you've got all the pieces. And then the, the actual instructions look fairly straightforward as it's all snap tight. Pushed together. And then your decal placement maybe. And then finally where it tells you to pull the tape out and where to push the button for the sounds. But not too bad at all. This kit finally cost me £26 off eBay. So again, thanks to the guys at work for contributing. Well, there it is. It's time to get cracking on. Stay with me. Right, I've started work on the Warthog. Um, on the chassis and the underneath with the engine bits and um, suspension. Following the plans, as you can see, I've put the suspension arms in. Um, you've got some uh, tow hooks with the suspension brackets that move up and down. Uh, a couple of engine blocks here and there. And as you can see, voila, there is the completed section. You can see that uh, these move. You can see that they push down. Like I said, this thing has got active suspension. You can see it moves. Now what I've done with the um, suspension 
um, rods, the actual springs. I've just painted those in a bit of silver just to bring them out. As you can see, they look a hell of a lot better and they stand out a hell of a lot more. I'm going to weather those as well because I looked on the picture, there's a bit of a rust effect um, where it's gone through water. So I'm just going to put a bit of a rust wash on that later on. But not looking too bad so far. Not much, but definitely something. Stay with me. Right, a little bit more work on the Warthog. I've turned over the... Um, chassis underneath stroke suspension sections and I've put the um, cockpit tub into place as you can see from the plans um, there's a couple of pins there's one here and the one on the other side just push that into place and make sure the bottom matches that as you can see push it right down now I've been doing a bit of weathering on the actual um, uh, feet area with the actual grating around the cockpit and around the uh, mounted turret area. Now the videos that I mentioned were from a channel called HPI Guys Workshop. I looked it up and what he was doing, he was using silver pencils to actually weather that grating and the rest of the warthog. Unfortunately there's no arts and craft shops around by me these days and I didn't fancy a an half an hour trip to Hobby Craft to get me some pencils. So I spoke to my niece who wears makeup, she's 19 years old, and she picked me up some makeup pencils. I've got a couple of uh, charcoal grey, a gold, and a silver. So rubbing some of this uh, silver into the grating, using my cotton bug stroke Q tip, as you Americans call it, and my fingers just smudging it down, and then the yards to reach corners, just using the wooden handle of the uh, cotton bud. You can see it turned out a hell of a lot better. So thank you to HPI guys for the uh, tip and to my niece for picking up the pencils. A cheap but effective technique. Stay with me. Right, welcome back. Now, the reason I did the uh, grating weathering for the footwells first is because... Um, once I put the centre console on the seats in, it would have been rather difficult to get inside there with all that in the way. So that's why I did all that first. Um, I then uh, pushed the seats into place. There's a couple of pin and pin holes underneath. You just push them in real easy. And then once that was done, I then put the centre console into place. But before I put the centre console into place, you can see I've put the uh, centre console uh, sticker on there. Number 7, I believe, off the sheet. And then I just got my uh, clean cotton bud oh, with the butt end of the uh, cotton bud first and then just dabbed down to get the sticker to stick and then just rubbed it with my with the cotton ended part of the cotton bud. So that's that done. Right now you can see that I've also done the dashboard. You can see the stickers are on there. Much the same technique with the cotton bud. Butt end first just to skate smooth down and then just a bit more pressure with the actual cotton part. Now with the steering wheel, it was a blank grey and I didn't want to leave it like that. So looking at some uh, pictures and videos of the Warthog on YouTube, especially the live action version of the Warthog that was on Forward Unto Dawn, um, the steering wheel, the actual wheel itself was black and then the actual um, interior arms was actually in uh, olive drab. So that's what I've put painted that in, just in the olive drab. Um, so this is now ready to be pushed into the uh, top of the cockpit area. Stay with me. Right, welcome back. Um, a lot of a lot more work has been done on the Warthog. Um, I put a black wash along with my Earthshade wash on top of that inside the cockpit to mucky that up a bit. Because obviously when it's going through like muddy terrain, it's obviously some of the water is going gonna, to gonna get inside the cockpit. Get a bit tongue-tied there. Let that dry. And then you've got this like roll cage that goes into the top of the seat and round the side and into the uh, side of the cockpit. You've got a pin there. You've got two in each side of the seat, each side of the headrest. And then one there. You just push all those into place. Eventually they will click into place. So that's that. 
And then before I put the um, actual body on, I put all the stickers on. You got the UNSC, you got the uh, UNSC Eagle there, you got a uh, stripe, a couple of nose steps, turning this thing round. You got another Eagle there and another UNSC there. So basically, um, I put those on, left them overnight to dry. I had to really push them down with my cotton bud to get them into place and let them set and then this morning um, I went to town with my wash on the actual body section and then using my hair dryer and my volumizing attachment using the HPI guys workshop technique and just dried the wash as I was applying it um, this section here it started to clump up a bit and what I did is I got my stipple brush while the wash was sticky especially over these two stripes I went a bit too much on it so I just uh, maneuvered it out to make it look more streaky and it looks a hell of a lot better not bad at all right then once that had all dried I then slotted the uh, body into place on the various pins and mounting holes um, around and just pushed that into place quite, actually quite easy once that was done I then did the roll cage you got this section here with that rod and that pushes into underneath of this section for the window for the windscreen I should say you just push it into place and then you put that in as one so you got one peg there one just underneath there one there one there and then there's a couple of um, mounting tabs with like clips on the underneath so as soon as you push them into place the clips will actually secure onto the underneath of the body and then you just get your fingers and give it that one last push down and fairly easy to put in then you've got the actual roll cage um, body protector rods around the various parts of the um, side of the um, body very easy to push in actually very easy to push in indeed um, you've got the, these two round here make it look like an ATV like I said, you just push push them into place, you get your finger and your thumb there and you just push them in to get that final click. And they look really nice, so obviously I've still got to weather those. Then you've got the um, tow cable and uh, hook assembly. As you can see, I've painted the tow cable in the silver and then the hook assembly I've painted that in gunmetal. Make it look a bit better. Obviously I've got to wash that and dirty it up. So you've got this square section here, you push that into place and then the tow cable and the hook assembly, you push that into that. So it makes it complete and then you've got the hooks around here as well. And then last but not least, you've got the uh, rear section here. So you push this box into place, maybe in some kind of toolbox or something. And then you push your cans into place, which is a three can assembly. It's all in one unit. Push that into place and then the can at the side. Now on the cans... I've used my uh, silver eyeliner and a bit of gold to dirty them up a bit so it looks like some of the paint has scraped away. I'm not sure if it will bring camera or pick it up. You can see a bit there, a bit on the side there. I've obviously got to do a bit more weathering on that. But this is virtually complete now and I'm loving the way it looks. Not bad at all. Stay with me. Right, uh, welcome back. Now, as you can see, I've got two different colour tyres because what it was is I was going to primer these tyres as I mentioned in the first video, the unboxing video, but it was snowing over the weekend really bad and I couldn't get outside to uh, do any primering. And in my porch, I just couldn't be asked to clear all the clutter out of the porch just to primer four tyres. So I thought, you know what, I'll have a go at painting them by hand with a brush and you can see that the paint has gone down really really well so there's n there is n actually no need to primer these at all you can just paint by hand just thought I'd let you know but you can see the difference between that and that even on the tread as you can see look it looks way better not bad at all stay with me <laughs> 